uh, one of the uh, big issues, of course, is sustainable production. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization predicts that food production will have to go up by 70%. There's a question here for us of actually, what approach do we take? Do we take the approach of what's called agroecology, of helping people to grow in their particular environment, or do we embrace all the new technology that's at our disposal, including biotechnology, such as genetically modified crops? Now, we're going to have a formal debate on, here, on there. Will you welcome, uh, first of all, from War on Want, Graciela Romero. <laughs> do take a seat. Amen. And then from Syngenta, will you welcome Mike Bushell. Thank you, Mike. Welcome, welcome. Do sit down. So the question is, how will we fe feed 9 billion people sustainably? Which is best, GM crops or organic agriculture? Now, both of them have got passionate supporters. You've got people who say organic is the only sustainable way. And people will tell you GM crops are a magic bullet that can solve all your problems, and vice versa. And of course, the truth in a polarized debate is always in the middle. Now, our chief scientist, Sir John Beddington, has done a huge review of food and farming. And the key concept that comes out of all the work his teams have done is that we need a sustainable intensification of agriculture. Now, that's not a solution. It's a concept. Mm. It rules nothing in and nothing out. It recognizes there is no single perfect solution for every situation. It's growing more from less. It's leaving space for wildlife in forests and wilderness areas. It's encouraging biodiversity on farms as well, preventing soil erosion and water pollution, tackling crop losses in the field and in the supply chain. And the best solutions, the most practical solutions, will definitely have modern technology at their heart. Success will depend on farmers' knowledge of their own fields and the crops that they're growing. In some situations, GM crops will offer unique benefits that can't be achieved in any other way. They'll be the best choice, as they are today, in corn and soya in North and South America. For other crops, like many fruits and vegetables, GM crops will have very, very little impact. And they'll make uh, and, and marker-assisted breeding approaches, using our genetic knowledge in different ways, will play a much bigger role. But technology alone isn't going to solve smallholders' problems. It's not a simple issue. They need investment in roads, in water systems, financial services like microcredit to help them afford better seeds and fertilizers, weather insurance in case the, the rains fail, and to work together in groups so that they can transport their produce away from the countryside to cities where they can get a better price for their crops. Higher prices, more income for them, better lives for their families. That's what the future of agriculture has got to look like for these people. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. From War on Want, Graciela Romero. It's a political problem. The problem lies in who makes the decision. It's not just the production, it's the distribution. Who distributes the food? Farmers were the first scientists in the world. Small farmers, women with the seeds, sharing the seeds, storing the seeds, they were the first ones. And they are still the ones who are feeding the world. 70% of the people in the world is fed by small farmers, no big corporations. Ten top companies own seeds in the world. And what are they doing for the people? One billion people going hungry, but profits for companies going up as well. Syngenta in 2012 have a almost 40% increase in, in revenue, almost $7.7 .7 billion. So why is the problem here? Why we are still having people going hungry? Because we don't have technologies? Technologies are there. There is something that you might know, it's called property rights on seeds. Intellectual property rights, meaning that if I had a seed before, I cannot save it because another company is going to own that, I will have to buy it. But plus that, I will have to buy the herbicides, the pesticides, sorry, the pesticides and the chemicals that I need to produce with that seed. What happened is, like in India, many farmers 
commit suicide themselves because they bought these seeds, they, they bought these uh, chemicals, and then they were in debt. They couldn't pay the debts. Agroecology, agroecology doesn't need huge investment. But interesting enough, the UK government is in investing 1.2 million in, in, a, in, a, in a research on genetic modified um, crops. Why they don't invest that in a small farmers' techniques, uh, sustainable techniques like agroecology?